Hello. Hello, how are you tonight? I'm very well, sir. Thank you for asking. We have uh, reached the end of the road here today, this evening, I guess, whatever. After 18 and tonight, 36 plays, so we'll have 38 after tonight. We've reached the end of the box set of Commands and Colors Medieval. How does that make you feel? A little sad. Well, yes, yes. I mean, all, all good things must come to an end, but it doesn't have to be the exact end, now does it? Oh? Uh, one of the questions I have been getting is, what are we doing after we finish this? And uh, I have reached out to GMT. Uh, I've not gotten a response yet, but I was kind of hoping that the Crusades expansion was far enough along in production and development that we could perhaps preview some of the scenarios if there's a Vassal module extension for it. That would be fun, and since it's nearing the development landmark of shipping... Well, I guess it's in art and production right now, so I'm not sure how long it's going to be before we actually get it into our hot little hands, but I thought that would be great because that is something fun that we can do, and perhaps it would help those P500 numbers prior to going live, as it were. So, uh, hoping to hear from that, but until such time as that comes about, we do have the fan-made scenarios on commandsandcolors.net. To it, there is a whole series of Viking Invasion of Britain, I think that would be kind of fun, don't you? Everyone likes Vikings. Who doesn't love big, furry hats and horns and ships with shields on the sides? And that's about all I know. I don't watch Vikings. But yes, Vikings would be great. So I think that's a natural progression for us. There are several scenarios there. It looks like they've got a campaign. In the short term, that's where we will carry on after we finish here in the base. We will just keep on plugging through and we'll go through those. I have no experience with any of them. I've not read any of them, so they will be completely fresh for both of us. So that that makes me kind of excited. Me too. I'm glad. So you did all the heavy lifting last week with Solachon main battle. Now we're going to talk about uh, Kaderigan stand on the, the hillock. There wasn't much to this after you had done so much setup, but just to remind the folks at home, we had the main battle last week, and the Byzantines have driven the Sassanids from the field, and Kaderigan has rallied what some scant forces he has left that have not completely fled. They made that smart choice of getting rid of all of their water rations. So that is going to be a factor in this. And he's assembled them all as this uh, a stand on this rise, this hill, if you will. And the Byzantines are launching wave after wave of, I guess, dissol- I mean, they're, they're not really effective attacks, but they're trying. They have no idea that Kadaragan himself is on this hill. But they spend four days doing this. And after four days, they just say, it's not worth it. They just give up. And I guess because their resources were starting to get taxed, they withdrew from the field, and that allowed Kaderigan to take the survivors off the hill and live to fight another day. But as you mentioned, <laughs> they're going to have some problems in the desert because of lack of water. So that's, uh, that's how we're ending this. But this is a very interesting scenario in its own right from a development standpoint. And I'm going to let you tell us about the War Council. The War Council is pretty darn interesting tonight. The Sassanids will have five command cards, five inspired action tokens. The Byzantines will have 11 command cards and three inspired action tokens. The first special rule is the Sassan player wins if the Byzantine player has not won by the end of the turn he plays his last command card. Note, the Byzantine player does not draw a new command card at the end of his turn, unless a scout command card is played. When a scout command card is played, the Byzantine player draws two command cards, keeps one, and discards the other card normally. The Sassanid player, when a scout command card is played, instead of drawing two command cards at the end of his turn, may instead draw one command card and take a victory banner. Taking a victory banner is not possible if doing so would give the player the final victory banner banner to win the game. The Byzantine player gains a sudden death victory when at the start of the Byzantine player's turn, more Byzantine units occupy the hill hexes than Sassanid units. 
And then, of course, everyone who is marked with a bow is armed with a bow. So, yeah, some uh, some pretty unique rules to close us out tonight. That's kind of cool. So does the purple window there have 11 slots for you? It doesn't have 11 slots, but it, it lets me draw infinite cards. 11. Yes, I have 11 cards. Excellent. All right. As always, I love when there's just a little twist. You know, that little thing would make you just look at it and go, somebody really thought that through. And uh, there's the two elements here of the beat the clock, which is fun, and the king of the hill. <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. That is going to be a lot of fun. So let me grab mine. I have them. So, so much of this scenario, of course, will come down to, I mean, luck of the draw. <laughs> like we always have every week with luck of the draw and luck of the dice, but even more so because if perhaps one of us gets a handful of scout cards, that could prolong the game or shorten it with the victory banners. So we shall see what happens. Do your worst. Good luck. Enjoy that cookie. And good luck to you too. First, I'm going to order my medium troops. All 11 of them, apparently. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let's see now. Tacking up the hill with two dice. Poor Bowman hit already, and they will fight down the hill with two dice plus leader bonus. Getting nothing. Well, thanks for starting that streak for me, though. So here we go. Second set of uh, mounted Bowman will attack uphill with two dice. Mm. Hit. Battle Cat does not like that. Two dice back downhill with a leader. There's a hit, and uh, you can ignore the retreat. All right, now attacking at your bow cavalry. Two dice. Hmm. If only you had leadership. Uh, only I had leadership. Two there. dice plus leader. Nothing. Okay, these guys will shoot an arrow. At those bowmen up on the hill. Nothing. These guys will charge uphill with two dice. And get a hit. And two back down the hill. No, uh, yeah, we do have a leader. Oh, two hits. Well, sir, you're in my face. So let's order my light troops. I get to do five of them. Those five. One, two, one, one, two. And the remainders will just fire and attack. We'll start with some bow action here. Two dice on your medium bow. Getting a retreat. And these will shoot at your other bowman here. Two dice. Another retreat. These will shoot one die at your bowman. Retreat. Um, and then these guys will fight downhill. What would your cavalry like to do? They'll stand. So it's two dice downhill with leader. Two hit. Two oh, hits. two hits. Yeah, they're medium. Hit and return. 
Alright, that is everything. I will draw my card. Okay, and we're out flanking you. Where are those four units? I've got good leader coverage on those hills. Charging him back up the hill. Two dice. One hit. Two back down the hill with leader. Hit energy. Okay, we'll fire a boat up up the hill. Nothing. Over here. Few bow shots. Nothing. And leader hits don't count. Hmm. I will play a scout card. Uh oh. And it will be an attack. From this light to this medium, and I will spend a battlefield token to make it three dice plus leader. Here we go. Nothing. One hit. Okay. I will opt to take a card and a banner. And take one card. Foot onslaught. I don't have any foot units. I'll order a unit of my choice. It'll be Vitalis here. He will go one, two, charge uphill against your auxilia. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'll do a first strike. Okay. Um, so we're going to get two back down the hill first with leader. I will spend the battlefield token. So three dice plus leader. One hit. There's a check on Vitalius. He's fine. Okay, two dice uphill. One hit. Yeah, this is going to be rough. Well, I may use it, in, might as well use it now. Mm. So, let us, let's activate just the one. I will use it as a scout card. And we'll do that. I will use a battlefield token for this. Make it three dice plus leader downhill. Getting the leader kill. And I will take one card and another foot on slot. Two dice going uphill against the auxilia. General momentum advance upwards. Attacking hill to hill. Two. Two dice. I'll spend a token on this one. Roll three dice. One hit. Here's the leader check. He's fine. 
There is two back with a leader bonus. Oh, that look! That look was worth it all right there. Here's the leader check. Oh, close. The hill has been breached. I suppose we should just do forward. The six. Move up, and everybody else will just fire, I think. Yeah, okay. So we'll do the lights first at Vitalius with two dice. Nothing. Uh, over here, shooting at your medium bow, my long bowman, two dice. There's a hit and a retreat. Have Aphraites after Vitalius with two dice plus leader. I'll throw in a battle token. Make it three dice. Scoring a leader hit. Uh, Vitalius lives. And that is all. Now. Leadership any section. Those units. You mounted charge. It's the charge of the medium brigade. And target that light bow cavalry. Three dice with the charge. Who's uh, who's attacking first? Oh. There you go. Okay. Uh, well, I am supported by one. I will spend a bravery token. And we'll battle downhill with two dice plus leader. I'm getting one hit. They will attack uphill with three dice. We're going to hit. Two back down with leader. Just one. Leader check. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to do very well in this one. We'll do a line command. Everyone activates. Do that. Okay. So, combat. Let's throw spears, or a spear, from over here. One die. Retreat. And medium bow will shoot one at Vitalius. It's going to hit. There's a leader check. He's fine. Uh, these light bow will shoot one die. Leader check again. Oh. Uh, Cadarigan. Cardarigan will shoot one die. There you go. Leader check, Justin. He's fine. I've never seen missile fire that effective in all of our games. Just plink, 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 one die at a time. Whittle, whittle, whittle. Uh, yes, this one seems incredibly tough for the Byzantines. Not only with the time pressure, but 
how do you approach? So that is a big challenge on ahead for me. So I am going to scratch my head on this one. Yeah, I should have put a little bit more thought into my attack instead of just going pell-mell in there at first with those mediums. I should have prepped them. I should have moved some leaders up on top of them so there was leader support with them when I moved, moved them up there. Not that I rolled that many leader hits when I attacked anyway, but still. How many cards did, what how many cards did you have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yeah, I thought you had five. Okay. That's a good metric on this one, too, is how long can the Sassanids hold out? Oh, and you had two scout cards, too, and that helped a lot. Yes, yes it did. All right, well, we will take a break, reset for round two, and see if the Sassanids can repeat. Stay tuned. Round two commences. Peter has waived the right to go get a a cookie. Did you just have one, or was that like Reese's Cup? I have Kit Kats. Oh, man. Can you tell I'm dieting? Mm. Oh, well. Let me grab my 11 cards here. One, 11. Okay. I have them. I have my five. So, let me wish you in uh, the air of good sportsmanship, good luck. Thanks, man. Let's do leadership on the right side. Do the leader plus three. There we go. We will commence a, a flinging and a pelting. So, take a pot shot at your bow here with one die. That's surprisingly effective. And these mediums will do the same. Same target. And you can ignore that. Alright. Uh, that is all. Dark in the sky. Boo! Could have been worse, I guess. With those four units. Well, the medium can't see anything. Right. Well, I have to order somebody. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I might as well. I order this light bow over here. Yeah, he's got range to something. I'll order those four. Okay. So we'll start over here. We'll take a pot shot at those medium mounted bowmen. Two dice. Ouch. And another pair. Okay, over here. Two dice. Two more. Two dice. Two more. There's a hit. Okay. Two dice. Right. Did they get two dice when they throw spears? Yes, they did do. move. Yep. Yep. There's a hit. And nothing. We'll do a move, fire, move. Shot there with one die, nothing, and take a shot at Mebedes. One die, nothing. All right, second move.
and left. It's only going to be those three units, so that's all I have in the left flank. Spear. Throw a couple of spears. And they'll fire their bows. There's a hit. Ouch. Yes, we'll do a rally. So I have nine cards with this one. So looking for triangles or leader symbols. So we'll do four. That's two. Four more. Two more. That's everything. And then one more die. Okay. So rally up to one, two, three. They get activated. Go one, two, three, one to there. What would your light cavalry like to do? Shall evade. Okay, three dice, looking for circles. No circles. It's gonna be just two up the hill. Nothing. Two back downhill. No streaks. Retreat. In the that is all. Coordinated attack. Those three units. All right. Two shots. Oh, there's a hit. Some more shots. Nothing. And over here, we'll try and ride down your light cavalry. We have four dice. Two hits. Two hits. There is two back. Do two on the left. Those two. Now we'll fire from here with two dice. Can you retreat? And here. We'll attack with two dice. Nothing. Two dice back. Nothing. Do another coordinated attack. Those three units this time. After those light bow cavalry, and I will spend a token on a battle bonus. Roll five dice. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. I move over there. And we will evade. Okay. Four dice. In circle. Two dice. Another hit. Do outflanked. Those four. All right, 
we'll start here and shoot one die at your lights. It's okay. They will shoot at Mebedees with two dice. Nothing. And then finally, we will attack with three dice. I'm going to spend a battlefield token, make it four. So four dice straight up. Okay, uh, they will not advance. Three in the center. Those three. All right, longbows against that fleeing light cavalry. Shot down. Mediums attacking your mediums with three dice. Hit and a retreat. Light bow will try and finish them off as they flee. Now, if you did move in a serpentine pattern, so this probably <laughs> won't work. Three on the right. We'll attack uphill first with two dice plus leader. One hit and a potential retreat. We will advance onto the hill. Battle again. What would they like to do? Elevate. Okay. So just two dice. Green circles. No green circles. The medium bow have moved, so just take a pot shot at your lights. Forward. Give me those five, since I don't have two in the left flank to activate. Going after that light bow cavalry. And we have been remiss on remembering our Parthian shots. Last cuts. Thank you, everybody, for pointing that out. We appreciate it. So, go ahead. Four dice. One hit. All right. And here's the Parthian on the way out. Getting a hit as well. Here's a leader check. No. And on your light cab. This one will not get the benefit, but he will evade nonetheless. You'll take a shot. Over here, Auxilia will attack uphill against the medium bow cab. Okay. Two, two dice. There's a hit. And I will get two back down the hill with a leader. Two hits. And medium cav attacking your medium cav hill to hill with two dice. I will spend a token up for the battlefield bonus. Make it three. Mm. Two hits and a retreat. Hit, hit. How many cards do you have left? I have five cards remaining. It's getting very tricky. So I will order... I will play a scout card. And we will activate... Vitalius 
He will go one, two, and attack your auxilia. The four dice plus leader. Getting a kill. He will not advance. Okay, don't forget to take your token. I will get my token. We'll do that first. So, one for the Byzantines. And I draw two. Keep one. Hmm. I will take this one. Discard that one. Line command. See my line. Two shots at that light cab. Nothing. Two shots at the medium boat cavalry. Nothing. Two shots at Vitalis. Hey, a hit and a retreat. Check that leader. I will take the retreat. All right, then they will fire a shot from the hilltop as you retreat. Glancing the blow off your shiny helmet that you borrowed from Philippicus. Very distinctive, that hat. It's just with all the ornamental peacock feathers and the mm -hmm. gleaming bronze. All right. I believe I will do two on the left. These two. We'll surround your bowman. Oh no, my bowman. Let's see what happens here. Uh, we'll do the regular cavalry first with two dice, hill to hill. Getting a hit. Two dice back. Hit and kind. And then over here, I will spend a battlefield token, make it three dice on your light bow. Getting one hit. A retreat. Leadership any section. Do the right section and order those two. Stunned. Stunned am I. I. And I will play a token or mount a charge. Attack uphill with three dice. Or in a leader hit. Hang on, my brave cavalry. Two dice downhill. Nothing. Three more dice uphill. We'll do leaders. Leaders? Just happen to have three leaders. So, two, two, two. All right. Attach leader battle with one additional die. All right. For the entire turn. Indeed. All right. So, we'll start over here and shoot at your light bow. Two dice now. Nothing. This one will shoot at that. See if we can't soften them up a little bit. Two dice. No. And then here, hill to hill, against the uh, same target. Eh, yeah, same target. 
Oh, I'll first strike you. Yeah. First strike me. That's been my last token. Yes. Yes. With three dice. Spent it. Get hit. Right. Keep track. Nope. So I'm going to get three. I'm going to spend Battlefield token. Make it four. So four dice on those light bow. Getting one hit and one retreat they must take. We will advance. Ambush! No! Four dice. Nice. One hit. One hit. Clear your track. He's fine. All right, I am now compelled because we were ambushed. I must fight that light bow, but they can't evade, so that's nice. So three dice plus leader. Three hits. All right. Uh, Nice to get two fresh command cards out of that, though, huh? Yes, it was nice. Very nice. Mounted charge. Confound you and your mounted charge cards. Oh, three. First up, four dice on your mediums. It's a, uh, I'll take that retreat. You want to continue on and so you could, you could follow up on that if you want to, but no pressure. No, there's no way there to attack. Three dice on Vitalis going uphill. No. Vitalis falls. At least his horse does. Oh, yes. He? Uh, unholst. All right. Nope, he flees. And six dice on your heavy cavalry. <laughs> well done. Look at that. Man. Uh, you still take the night, though. Well, I do. I do. But uh, let's see if Elephrates falls. Ah, he would have lived. Hey, my horses. Very good. Excellent way to finish out the whole series. Our final score tonight. I took the first game 5-1. And you take the second game, three to five. I take the night with eight banners to six. So, not bad. If you would like to talk about closing thoughts on this scenario and beyond, if you want to look at all the way back, if you've constructed any thoughts about the medieval series as a whole in the base game, you want to talk about that or you just... This there was interesting. Um, it had some fun mechanics, but it is very hard for the Byzantine player if you get a very poor draw. I should have thought better and worked my troops into position before I started spending cards to move them. But you having to scout cards certainly didn't help. I thought about playing my ambush card as a scout card once I got the third banner, since I couldn't play it to get the fifth banner. But yeah, I got greedy. And... and ambushed you when I really probably shouldn't have. Well, that's why uh, I took mine back in this game, because I realized, or use the scout card, hey, that's gold. I need that. Let me take that back. <laughs> because because uh, the way I had this second game figured was I wanted to, to try... Well, let me start by saying that I think the hill stratagem is... I mean, you just got too many people. Assassins have too many people on the hill 
for the Byzantines to try. Although you started to pull them out a little bit when you started pursuing me off the hill. I was like, I was sitting there doing one, two, three, four, five. You know, I was trying to see, okay, how many total are there? You've got seven. If I can get five. But then I was like, that's a lot of coordination and movement. Plus, as long as I'm up there, you're going to do what you did is come back and just trap me. So I, I kind of discounted that one as not really possible. But I did feel that I that the Byzantines need to go for the flanks. And as soon as you offered a couple of opportunities where you had the singles there, especially the two in the back, that's what I was going for ultimately. And that move, fire move, just made that possible. But anything on the extreme wings where you can just kind of pick off and get them away from the center, that's I thought that was the way to go. And having the rally card certainly helped. I had the one str- this one scout card and then you know, the second one yeah, as, I mean... an, as an ambush. So I was loath to use that. But as you said, fun. I think the mechanics are really cool. I would love to play this on the table a couple of times, and because we're at we're at an hour eighteen, hour twenty on this one, so that gives you an idea of how much consideration both of us have done on this one. So I think it gives a lot of pause for good processing, and it's just neat that you've got eleven cards. You've got to beat the clock as the Byzantines, and if you don't, then that's that's a five banner auto victory for the Sassanids, which is what how I was going to calculate that. And that's kind of what I was thinking I was going to wind up doing at this point. How many cards do you have left? I had three at left, yeah. One of them was a, a, the scout ambush. So, yeah, I could have stretched out a little bit, but it was getting pretty close. And I just, I kind of, re, you know, at my goal at this point, once you started getting ahead, was, okay, he's going to get the five banners for the auto victory. So I just want to get more than one so I can tie. I just want to tie the knight thought that would be a nice way to end the series but getting three was just gravy so that was fun what do we think of the whole of the series so has there anything been particularly memorable for you or that you not enjoyed or you felt was too consistently inconsistent or samey or what as far as samey goes there are a lot of mounted units there are some scenarios where it's all mounted units and you get those foot onslaught cards and they're just kind of useless so horses you uh, say I, I horses I, I just hadn't seen a lot of horses in this one i guess i wasn't paying attention but overall i i like some of the improvements i like i like the the battlefield tokens i think you use them more effectively than i do i'm always loath to, to spend resources because i I'm always hoard them for that perfect moment and it never comes and you just seem to sp- spend them like water and and devastate me with them so that's your your chipmunk theory huh you're hoarding them like nuts in the cheeks um well this this will be a good i think when we eventually go on to samurai because they the the, i guess honor tokens are how the bushido kind of thing where they've got that for the samurai um in that so that's the currency in that one where it lets you spend additional command abilities which i think is going to be pretty cool um yeah, I, I really like that they added that because in some of the games it is a nice enhancement. I think when they first tried it in Battle Lore as the lore me- mechanism, that's where it's born out of, I get the feeling that it was just a little too much. It's like, okay, this unit can cast a spell or this can do that. and Not to say it's not fun, but if you don't enjoy high fantasy, which you know, I, I would love to go back through Battle Lore because uh, I really haven't had a chance to play much of it, but... Um, yeah, I think the command tokens on this one really give you some nice extra flexibility. I remember you and I in the first couple of games were just like, uh, I don't know, what, what do we do? And I was the same way. I was like, I don't want to spend them. And then once you realize, oh, mounted charge, I can do a mounted charge whenever I want if I got a leadership. Yeah, let's do it. That's pretty, pretty effective. Um, they can e- enhance your capabilities. Well, you spend yours more often than not just for that extra die roll in combat. Well, and you tend to use them more for bravery than I do, because, you know, you're, I am yeah, always... You're rolling all the, you're rolling all the flags. I don't, I, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I really do. I think you and I have found the high points uh, the same way. I, there are some, I think it's just the nature of the late Roman Empire, the Byzantium era, you know, with the Persian and the Sassanid scenarios on this one. It's just, it's horse archers, and it's cavalry so as they move into the crusades i presume and we will all see the also see this with the vikings where we're going to have more use of the warriors and things like that 
So it, it will be nice to kind of come back onto foot because when a foot unit's going up to a, a super heavy cavalry and just saying, picking at them, and if you don't get a red square or a leader, it's pretty useless. Um, but 19 scenarios, they've been some exceptionally memorable ones. I, I really think where they have taken the time to design a mechanic like this one in this last scenario where there's something unique and it's not just like, here's all your super heavy cavalry, go. Those reward additional plays, I think. But I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with the with the Crusades, how they're going to weave that narrative, that tapestry into that. So, Any other thoughts on this one before we let them go? I think you weave about summed it up. Okay, well, for everybody that's been with us since the first scenario, hell, all the way back to the beginning of Ancients when we were adorably rough, Thank you so much for your continued support and enthusiasm and all your comments, feedback, critiques, and, you know, those little things that we've forgotten, especially those Parthian shots. We really appreciate you taking a moment to leave comments down there in the video comment section, so keep doing it. And we will start right up next week, continuing on with the first Viking scenario, so come on back. And you can take a moment to click the like and subscribe, as we remind you every week. That helps the algorithm. That gets a little more visibility. But the people who are watching these, they're already enjoying it. So tell your friends. Peter, great games tonight. A lot of fun. And until next week. Have a good night. Uh, we need to say something Viking. For Valhalla, I guess. I, I don't know. Well, next week we'll, we'll come up with some sort of Viking phrase. Okay. You do that. Nord. <laughs> Talk to you later. Good night.